just sit and cross our legs. If you have yoga gear, sit on a foam pad or a bolster. If you don't, sit in a cushion or a nice thick book. Draw the flesh of your sit bones out and back. I have two bricks and a belt. A couple of books and a belt would be ideal. Take your feet forward so that your feet are in line with your knees. Did you reach under your sit bones? Do it a second time. And then take the backs of your thighs here. Spread out also and feel that your knees descend. We'll take our fingers onto the floor beside the hips and pushing in. Lift up your chest. As you lift up your chest, this is your sternum. Feel it go up and then feel a broadening out into your collarbones. Connect with your breath. And feel with each inhalation, the sternum lifts. With each exhalation, the shoulder blades draw down. Each inhalation, the sternum lifts. Each exhalation, the shoulder blades draw down. Create that pattern of inhale in the front body, exhale in the back body. And then let's inhale and go forward. I'm saying inhale so you keep the lift. And then walk the hands out. And then you need to exhale. And then inhale and go forward again. So you can walk the hands out. As you do, eventually your head may go onto the floor. But the bricks are a great friend in this because. A lot of us won't get our head quite down onto the floor. So as you go out, you may find you can take your head onto a brick or lower or higher or two. Two is about it. If you go up to three, it starts to get unsteady. And the arms reach out, reach out. The forehead releases down. Get the support. Just at the space between the eyebrows, okay? Rather than onto your nose or your face. And lengthen it forward as you progress into the pose. And as you hold the pose, bring that breath pattern in. Inhale, front chest, lifting. Exhale, shoulder blades drawing down, the back ribs in there. Inhale, chest lifting forward now toward your brick or your block or your books. Exhale, back ribs in. And then hands back, inhale, come right back up. Cross the legs the other way. Back leg becomes front leg. In the crossing of the legs, the sit bones and the flesh thereof gets a little bit. Uh, tucked under. So spread again and then again take the hands out. Lift that sternum. Inhale forward. Exhale go out. Inhale lift. Exhale further until you see you can support your forehead. If you can't it's okay. If you're only halfway down, if you're only a third of the way down, if you're only slightly forward it's okay. You go to your level, you feel your stretch, you do the work, you grip into the hips to help to take the knees down. The knees will start to go as they go further, your chest will go further. If you feel pinching in your back, come back up and sit more upright and go up with the sternum again. And then inhale, come right back up. And we're going to unfold the legs. If you were sitting on something, put it to one side and go back with your feet. Have your toes toward the back edge of the mat. Your knees are hip width apart. Adho Mukha Virasana next. Adho Mukha means downward facing. Virasana is hero pose. Is there ever a lovelier pose? Arms reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out. Hips draw back. It's a sitting pose, so keep your bum back on your heels. Reach the arms forward, spread out your shoulder blades, and then relax your forehead down. Spread out those shoulder blades, 
draw back those hips. Do you find your finger bases lift? Root down into them. Lift the center of the heels of the hands a fraction so that you can roll down into the finger bases. And then from there, you're ready for Adamaka Svanasana, down the facing dog. Come forward onto the hands and knees just so you can curl your toes under. And then pushing firmly into the hands, lift up your hips. Lift up your hips. Let your neck relax. Drop your head down. And push up into the pelvis. Lift the hips up. Lift the groins up. Strong straight legs. Stretch the heels down. As your heels go down, can you lift your toes? As you lift your toes, can you spread your toes? As you spread your toes, do you notice your shin bones come to life? Taking the weight back, working the legs, opening the backs of the knees, increasing the stretch. Take the heels down, the heels down, the heels down, the outer heels down. And then from there, walk your feet forward. And then walk your hands back. And then inhale and come up to stand. And now we'll stand with our feet together. We're going to jump our legs wide. If you've got joint tissues, knees, ankles, hips, back, shoulders, neck, you can step, okay? But it's nice to jump because it brings dynamism right out into your extremities. Arms across the chest, bend the knees. Trikonasana, Uttita Trikonasana. Turn your right toes out. Turn your left toes slightly in, draw up on the legs, inhale. Exhale, reach out over your right leg. Take your hand down onto your right leg and push into the hand and lift and turn away from that right side and reach up into your left arm and look up at your left hand. As you look up at your left hand, ground back into your back heel, outer edge of the back foot. Do you feel your right leg? Can you take your inner thigh and groin forward as you roll your left hip back. Grip into your right buttock to help to take your right groin forward. And then push it into your right foot. Inhale, come up, turn the feet, keep the arms out. Feet going to the other side. So your left toes are out, your right toes very slightly in. We often shorten from one side to the next, keep it nice and long. Lift that stern, inhale, exhale, reach out over your straight left leg. Take your hand down and then roll back your right side. Roll back your right ribs, your right hip. Root down into your right heel, outer heel particularly. Feel how that helps you to draw the thigh back. And then your left leg. Take the inner thigh forward by gripping into the outer thigh, gripping into the buttock. So you can look up at your right hand with your left eye. Wing gather. And then pushing into that foot. Inhale, come up. Turn the feet to face forward. Let's release the hands down. We're going to do it again. We're going to go a little longer, but we're also going to use our equipment. So I'm using the brick and the block, but if you are using just whatever you have at home, I'd suggest um, one nice thick book and perhaps a hardback. You know, one of those coffee table books you never really actually look at. Okay, so that it's firm and we've got an angle. And I'm gonna take my right foot onto it like that, okay? And now it's particularly right there, the ball of my foot. I want to feel that I'm pushing in, okay? And then the back foot goes back. Ooh. And as I said, we go a bit longer. So let's go a little bit longer. All right, good. Now, draw up on both sides. This knee tends to look in. Get the knee looking toward the middle toe. 
feel the outer edge of the leg open as much as the inner and then ground into the back heel. Inhale, arms out. Exhale, extend out over your right leg and then go down. Would it be possible like this to take your hand down onto the floor? Now I'm not going beside my ankle because look, that throws my arm out. It's straight under the shoulder. And I'm going to use my forearm against my shin to brace in the leg, taking the groin forward and then ground into the back heel and look up at your left arm and roll back the whole left side. And then remember the breath we began with? Inhale, sternum up. Exhale, shoulder blades in. Now you observe the breath, but not at the expense of the detail in the body. So it becomes a very absorbing pose. It's a whole practice in itself. Keep the sternum lifting through inhale and exhale. Take the exhale into the back ribs. Shoulder blades into the back ribs. Push from the ball of your right foot back into the outer left heel. And then finally, pushing firmly into that whole foot on your next inhale, come right back up. Let's release those hands. Turn the feet forward, heel toe them in, and we're moving our wedge over to the other side. And then take your left foot onto it. Make sure it's firm, you can push firmly into it. And then go back and back, nice and long with your right leg. Right toes turned slightly in, left foot faces the whole way out. Inhale, out with the arms. Exhale, reach out. And then down. And let's see once again, will the hand go onto the floor? If you can't quite get it onto the floor, Another good thick book like that. And then use your forearm, brace it into your left calf. Take your inner thigh forward, draw up on the knee and the thigh, and then push from your left hand up into your right. Roll back your whole right side body. Keep the outer edge of your right foot firm on the floor. And then use your breath. Inhale, lift the sternum. Exhale, shoulder blades in. Inhale, lift, lift the sternum. Exhale, shoulder blades in. And then pushing firmly into the hole of your left foot. On the inhale, come right back up. Release the hands. Turn the feet to face forward. I want to do a short resting Uttanasana. Here, toe your feet in, okay? Have your feet. Let's, for our first resting Uttanasana, have the feet mat width apart like that. And then on your next inhale, take up your elbows. Reach up the elbows. On your next exhale, keep that straightness in your upper body. Keep the firmness in the legs. Start to extend out, extend forward, extend out, extend forward until eventually you can hang right down. Imagine you're like a rag doll hanging on a washing line. The washing line is there across your groins and you're hanging over it. Let the legs be firm and grounded. Feel the upper body releasing releasing down. And then inhale, look out. Exhale, hands by the sides, by the hips. Inhale, come up to stand. And then standing, come back to the middle of your mat, facing me, feet together. We're going to do Virvadrasana 2, Warrior 2. It's a wide pose. Arms across the chest, bend the knees, jump or step the legs really wide. And then turn your left toe slightly in, turn your right foot and leg right out. 
Now, the pattern we created in trichinophana, we want the same, both in the legs and in the breath. So, what pattern do I mean in trichinophana? This leg is moving back. Not so much out. Yes, a little out, but very much back like this. This leg is gripping in, so you feel this action, okay? I notice a front view for a moment. As I do this, and most likely as you do this, mm, do you see what I mean? I'm losing it, I'm losing it. My, my butt's sticking out and my knee is wandering. So I want the knee to go out and the hip to grip in, okay? Let's do that together. Take the legs out, take the arms out. Turn your left toes slightly in. Turn your right foot and leg the whole way out. Now, lift your pubic bone, grip in your left hip. Don't let it wander out, grip it in. Arms out, chest opens as the arms go out. Inhale, exhale, bend into your right knee and let's get a little lower in this. It's a warrior pose. It's not a shavasana. Get lower. As you get lower, take the knee back. As you take the knee back, grip the hip in. Take the groin forward. Do you feel that same trikonasana work? Open out and your back leg, your left leg, roll it back. And then feel your spine lift up. Feel the arms broad and open. Look out along that right arm. Open across your front chest. Open across your back chest. Use your breath, inhale, sternum up. Exhale, shoulder blades down and broaden your shoulder blades. And then inhale, come right back up. Release the hands, turn the feet to face forward and then we go to the other side. So turn your left toes out, your right toes slightly in. Inhale, arms out, lift the chest, grip in the right hip. Exhale, bend and bend and bend into your left knee. And as you do, knee back, hip lower, knee back, outer hip grips in, groin forward, right thigh back, and then chest lifts. Look out along your left arm. You tend to lunge, you know that feeling? Keep your shoulders over your hips, yet sit lower, and then notice your breath and inhale into your front chest. Exhale into your back ribs. Inhale from the front chest. Exhale from the back ribs. Inhale back up. Release the hands. Turn the feet forward. Parsvakanasana, Uttita Parsvakanasana. These two have so many similarities that I'm going to just flow from one into the other. So turn your left toes in a little, your right foot and leg the whole way out. Keep the length. Inhale, arms out. Exhale, bend the knee. Back to warrior two. Get that hip in, but resist with the back leg. Get the outer edge of that left foot onto the floor. And then we'll take the arm down. And now use it to brace the knee back. So we feel that opening in the uh, right groin. And then from there, roll back your left side and reach straight up and look at that arm. And then can we take the hand down onto the floor and brace the knee back, lean back, lift your chest. The hand is inside the leg so that we can push back into the knee and lever your right groin forward. Can you breathe? Can we lift the chest? To help lift the chest, take the arm over your head. Now that left arm tends to fall forward. Roll it back, move it back, push into your right hand and look up more so that your whole left side rolls back. And then reach up with your left arm and imagine someone is holding it. I'm holding your hand and I'm gonna pull you back up. Great, turn your feet face forward and then the other side. Turn out your left toes, right toes slightly in. Have you kept your length? Inhale, arms out. Exhale, Virabhadrasana too. Come down into it. And then from there, get lower, get lower. Take the forearm onto the leg. Brace the knee back, you feel that? Inner thigh opens. Brace that knee back. 
Sit down lower, raise that knee back. And then let's take the hand right down, sit down lower, but resist with your right leg ground into the outer heel. Lift up into your right arm. Push your left knee back, but take your left groin forward and then reach your arm over and look up underneath your right armpit and push from your left hand into your right ribs, roll back. As you roll back, take your left groin forward. Then reach up the arm. I'm gonna catch your hand and pull you back up. Lovely. Release the hands onto the hips, turn the feet to face forward. We're not quite done yet. Can you feel that? That pose is more to give us. So we're gonna turn the left to right toes in. No, left toes in, right toes out. Inhale, arms out. Exhale, bend the knee, bend the knee. Let's go right down. And now take your fingers onto the floor outside your leg. Now we don't have the luxury of the arm pushing into the knee. Now we have to push the knee into the arm. But the upper body is further back, so the chest opening is easier. Then reach your left arm over your head toward the left end of the room and turn and look up, look up, look up, look up. Lean back. Lean your whole left side back and as you do is your chest connected can you breathe can you lift the sternum as you exhale can you draw in the ribs have you lost the outer edge of your left foot ground into it take your left arm up and inhale let's pull ourselves back up release the hands turn the feet to face forward and then turn the left toes out, turn the right toes slightly in. This is our last side of Uttita Parsva Kanasana. Inhale, arms out, chest lifts. Exhale, sink into the knee. And then take the arm down, it's outside the leg this time. And push in and lift up into your whole right side, roll it back. Then take your right arm over beside your right ear. And with your hand back behind you, Lean back, lean back. Now, as I lean back, I feel my left knee falls in. Hit the knee back. You have to grip into the outer hip to hit the knee back. And then see, can you look up under the armpit? Have you lost your back leg? Ground into it. Roll back with that whole right side as you ground into the outer edge of your right foot. And then notice your breath as your sternum sinking. On your inhale, can we lift and open, lift and open? Exhale, back ribs in. And then reach up with your right arm and inhale, pull yourself back up. Wonderful. Hands down onto the hips. Turn the feet to face in. Heel toe those feet in until once again you are hip width apart. Okay? And then take your arms up, fold your elbows. We've done this. Fold them the other way. Rising. Inhale, lift. Exhale, stretch out, lengthen out, lengthen out, extend forward. Feel the upper body easing down, upper body easing down. Relax the back of your neck. Reach further down, elbows toward toes. And then, can you drop your hands down like this? I'd like to go into what's called Padangasasana. You know Padangasasana? You hold on to your big toes. And do you see my hands? Two fingers and thumbs. The palms face each other. I often see people do this. It closes here, okay? You wanna keep some nice openness in the upper chest. Isn't that an underlying theme in today's class? So now inhale and see, can you lift your sternum forward? Are your knees bending? Keep them straight, hit them back, lift that chest out. And then as you exhale, 
So you can start to bend your elbows. And as you do, hit your elbows out to the sides. Upper body eases down, eases down. Looking back between those knees. Hit the elbows out. See, can you go a little further? Can you go a little further? Can you lift your sit bones at the same time? They tend to drop, don't they? So broaden and lift the sit bones. Do you remember earlier I was saying lift your toes in dog and it got your shin bones working? Well, in dog, it's most of the work is in the thighs. In this, it's more of the shins. So hit the shins back, root the heels down, yet take the weight forward. And then as you next inhale, come right back up, right back up to stand. Take a moment, you might have a little dizzy spell. And I need you balanced for the next pose. We're going to do Ardha Shinrasana, half moon pose. Now, I'm going to recommend, unless you really, um, unless you find this pose very manageable, it might be worth having a good thick book or of course a yoga brick. So we go into this from Trikonasana, okay? And I'm purposely over to one end of my mat for this. And I'm gonna put this to the other end. Hands on hips. So you get a sense of your hips. And then turn your left toes in a little. Right foot and leg the whole way out. Inhale, arms out. Exhale, reach out and down into Trikonasana. Roll back your whole left side. And we'll drop the left hand onto the left hip. Then look down at the right foot, bend the right knee, fingers onto the floor. Hop the back foot in. Take the hand, the foot in front. Do you want to use your brick or not? Your choice. Lean into the hand and then lift up the back leg. Lift up the back leg. Lift up the outer leg. You will feel the outer buttock and the outer thigh work. And then remember the work we were doing earlier. Roll back your whole uh, left side and then reach up into your left arm. Now, if your balance is really good, you can turn and look up at your left hand. Keep the leg lifting. Keep the standing leg strong and straight. Draw up on the knee. And then as you hold it, lift the sternum with the inhale. Shoulder blades in with the exhale. And then let's Bend the standing leg. Step it right back. You will notice I haven't gone long enough. My trikonasana should be longer. So there's a learning curve even on the exit. And then as you next inhale, come right back up. Turn the feet to face forward. We move over to the other side. It's a long pose. You need space. Now, if you think you need your book or your block or your brick, put it down to the far end of the mat. Turn your right toe slightly in. Turn your left foot and leg the whole way out. Inhale, arms out. Exhale, Trikonasana, out over your left leg. Take your hand down onto your left leg. Roll back your right side. The shoulder, the ribs, the hip. Let's briefly drop the right hand onto the right hip. Look down at your left foot. Bend the left knee, fingers beside the outer foot. That gives you the space to hop that leg in. And then take your hand forward and then lean into it. I find we often think I have to keep the weight in the foot. It's much easier, you'll feel it in a moment, if you lean some weight into your hand. What happens is it's much easier to lift the leg. So lift that leg, bring some weight into the hand, lift that leg. And then can you roll your right shoulder back and reach up with your right arm? Grip into the outer right leg from outer buttock into outer thigh. Lift the leg higher, kick the heel toward the back end of the mat. And then, can you turn your gaze? You're aiming eventually to turn and look up toward the ceiling. And as you hold it, can you bring your breath into the pose? Inhale, up under the sternum. Exhale, shoulder blades. Inhale up under the sternum, exhale shoulder blades, and then let's step it back. How does our pose look as we come back? My foot's a little forward, that means my leg was drifting. And then, Trikonasana, and inhale, and come back up. 
and release the hands and turn the feet to face forward. I'd like to do uh, Prasarita Padottanasana, a wide-legged forward bend. And with this, I'm going to step back to the back edge of your mat, of my mat. <laughs> I'm not on your mat. So I can use the lines of the edges of the mat. And you may also need your book, your foam pad, whatever you have. So I'm going to start. I'll show you with that much. Okay? There's no hard and fast rule how wide you go. If I go very wide, my head's just going to go down super easy. If I'm more stretchy in my legs, I need to go closer. Okay? So that I have more extension. I have more space to extend. So with that in mind, beginners, go a little wider. If here starts to complain, maybe not quite so wide. Okay? So unlike that, my feet wander. Do you feel the same? They tend to turn out like this. You lose your power. You get a stretch here, but you, in this pose, you need to get it into here. So turn the feet in a little. Feel here it's spreading. Back thighs are spreading. And then drop in the legs. Thigh bones, suck them into the hips. Hands on the hips. Inhale, lift and open the chest. Exhale, let's go forward. Lift and open the chest. Drop your hands. Now, with your feet at the back of your mat, your hands are at the front of your mat. Draw up on those legs. Suck the thighs into the thigh bones. Feel that you're concaving your back. Someone recently said, I don't know what you mean, concave your back. I mean, scoop your middle back down. It's like there's a small child sitting on your back. Scoop your middle back down. So the chest goes forward and the sit bones go up. Do you feel that? And then from there, can, that creates a real straightness in your back. From there, can we go down? As you go down, can you walk your hands back? And maybe your head comes down onto your brick. Well then, let's break. And then your palms push down and your head comes down a little lower. And maybe you need to go lower. So by degrees, you remove whatever support you had put in place until your head comes down and onto the floor. The elbows draw back. The feet push firmly down. And now notice your breath. Your chest has collapsed, hasn't it? It's really sunk into your body. So could you, with each inhalation, lift that sternum? With each exhalation, take your back ribs in. And then inhaling, come forward, fold with your hands, walk them out, and let's walk them out. Treat it like a really wide-legged dog. Push into your palms. Extend your sit bones back. Reach out with your arms. Extend your sit bones back. And then, can you walk your hands back in? Have the hands again at the front edge of the mat, just under the shoulders. And then let's heel toe, the feet back in together. Inhaling, come right back up to stand. I'd like to do what's called Utkatasana, means fearsome pose. Sometimes it's called thunderbolt pose because it makes that kind of bowy thunderbolt. Um, sometimes people call it chair pose because it makes something of a chair shape. So, feet are together in this. Sometimes people do it with feet apart. Not today. Feet together. Toes touching. Heels touching. Thighs grip in. Inner thighs hit each other, perhaps. Depends on the shape of your legs. When we inhale, we go up with the arms. And then exhale and sit, and sit lower, and sit lower, and then look up. Side view, as I sit low, here it tends to stick out. Who doesn't know that feeling? Tuck the tailbone, draw the, the lower abdomen away from the thighs. Does that make your back round? 
Use your exhale to take your back ribs in. Reach the arms up, look up. Weight back into the heels. And then inhale, or come back up. Release the hands down. It's great. We're going to do it again. <clears throat> and we're going to bring it into what's called Parsva Utkatasana. That means sideways. All right? Inhale, arms up. Exhale, bend the knees. Now, take your hands into prayer pose. And take your left elbow outside your right knee. Do you see your knees slip? Keep your knees together, squeeze them in, and then push in and lift and turn. And see, can you look up over your right shoulder? Now, as you do that, do you feel, find your right knee slips back? Push it forward. That'll release across your lower back. And then inhale, come right back up. Exhale, bend the knees, come down. Let's go to the other side. So now take your right elbow outside your left knee and brace in and lift and turn and lift and turn and look up over your left shoulder. Are you sliding your left knee back? Push it forward. And then inhale, release. Come right back up. Exhale. Bring the hands down. Super. Last standing pose. Tree pose. Vrixasana. From the feet together, I feel I need to walk them out for a moment. Okay? I feel I've bedded them into the mat there. So now I'm ready. So standing firm. Grip your legs in. So in Tadasana, suck in the thighs. Grip the thigh bone heads into the hip sockets. Navel in. Perhaps tailbone down. If you're a flat-backed person, then no. But if you're a sway-backed person, absolutely yes. It's not a rule for everyone, but for me it works. Tucking in, I feel everything holds. And then stand firm on your left leg. Lift up your right leg. Take your foot up into your left thigh. Toes going straight down. Do you see my foot? We often turn it in and you lose your grip. So toes straight down. So the whole of your foot's connecting with your inner thigh. Now think of Tadasana still in this leg. Grip it in. That's it. And now do you feel your right buttock is bulging back? Suck it in like Trikonasana. Do you feel the stretch in the groin? You should. It's like Trikonasana again. And take the knee back. And then is the chest sinking? Lift up. Bring the breath up under the sternum. That helps you to work your standing leg. Take the arms out. If your balance is challenged, keep the arms out like this. If your balance is feeling secure, turn the palms up. Inhale, go up with the arms. And then push firmly into your left foot, your standing foot, and feel that you lift up out of it, lift up out of it. Keep your right knee moving back. Keep your right buttock gripping in. Keep your right groin moving forward. Feel your right foot push into your left thigh. Feel your left thigh push equally into your right foot. And then release the arms down. Release the leg down. Balance. I find quite a bit of it is patience and relaxing into it. I, something I notice a lot in myself and in people in class, when they go to fall, they have a moment of, mm, you know that feeling? Let it go. Go, okay, yeah, okay. That's easier said than done. But if you can keep your cool or if you can regain your cool, your balance becomes much more easy. Okay, it's when you stress about it that you really start to become unbalanced. You know what I mean. We're going to stand now on your right leg, okay, and lift up your left leg get the foot right up into the right groin really and the whole of the foot is on the thigh no turning foot so then you can stand your foot into your thigh and take your knee back take your um, left knee back but grip in your left buttock to take your left groin forward and then your standing leg bring it into Tadasana and as you lift it in you'll feel the inner thigh lift and you'll feel the whole body go up and then we take the arms out, 
this is always the point I go, do I have it today? Am I wobbly? If I'm wobbly, I just keep the arms out. If I feel secure, I turn the palms up. And then inhale, go up. And now as you go up, take your groin forward, take your knee back. Gripping your left buttock, take your left knee back. Push firmly into your right foot and feel that you're lifting, lifting up from there. As you lift upward, lower abdomen lifts. Feel you're lifting from the sides of your hips. Feel your armpits lift. And then observe your breathing. Inhale up under the sternum. Maintain that lovely sternum. Lift, exhale, shoulder blades in. And then arms out. Feet down. Listen to the beautiful pose. Now, it's time to sit down. So, will we sit down together? And we're going to do a pose that I have a feeling you may not like, but you will appreciate. It's called Navasana. Okay? Navasana will start from Dandasana. Dandasana, staff pose. It's the most basic sitting pose. So the legs stretch out. The sit bones draw right back. And to start with hands like this. This is the lazy way with the hands like this. I'm going for the lazy way so I can very quickly extend into my feet to get straightness in the legs. And then I will go the more traditional way, which is the hands like this, fingers forward. If I do like this, structurally it does the work. If I do like this, I have to do the work internally. It's muscular work. Because what I want to do is like this, I can open the chest and I can grip here the back of the armpit like that. So do that and get that chest to lift. And then hold that lift with your hands forward. Do you feel how your upper back and the backs of the armpits have to grip in and the shoulder blades have to grip in and down? But now you have a tool to help with your shoulder blades called your breath. You inhale and lift that sternum. You exhale and draw the shoulder blades down. Feel how your back shoots up. You may even become a little taller. And none of this is Navasana, but it's related to Navasana. Because what we're now going to do is keep that straightness in your spine, in the lift in your chest, and the straightness in your legs. The floor being that guideline, it's like a plumb line. You know your legs are straight if they're on the floor. And then take the hands back like forward like this. And we're going to just push them into the floor and tilt our pose. Just like that. Tilt, tilt the pose. I'm putting my feet in your face, I apologize. And then can you reach your arms out and stretch into your fingers? Can you lift your chest? And then bend the legs and come down. I can't see your pose, but I bet I can see your pose. What I always see is people's backs round and they slouch, okay? So I'm going to get you to do it slightly differently. Holding on to your knees, we're going to lift like this, okay? And now, do you feel the back slouch? Let's not do it. Let's lift the chest, lift the chest. Even take the back of your neck and head back. Draw the back ribs in. Use your breath. Each inhale, sternum up. Each exhale, shoulder blades down. And can you tilt back just a fraction more? People often ask, where should they be sitting? It's a tripod of the sit bones, tailbone, okay? Don't roll it all into the tailbone because that's when your lower back drops. Roll it forward, try and get the sit bones down. And then arms out, chest up. Use your breath, chest up. Use your shoulder blades, your exhale. And then could we bring the legs up a little? And let's hold like that, lift up that chest. Reach the arms out, lift up that chest. and then come back down. Okay. It may not have been final pose, but I think it was probably much better pose. So we're going to try and do it again, okay? One more time. Bring in the knees. Feel that you're on that tripod base, and then chest up, arms out, and now squeeze the legs in, lift them up, 
Lift the chest, lift the lower back, lift them up further, lift the chest, exhale shoulder blades, lift them further. See will the legs straighten and then cross those legs, take them out and go forward and walk the hands forward. Lift your sternum out, walk your hands forward. Because the groins really were quite hard, you would have felt that, and this will soften your groins. And then inhaling, come right back up. Wonderful. I'd like to do Virasana, perhaps going back into Supta Virasana. So, firstly, to warm up a little. Can I get you to sit like this? What are my feet doing? My toes are touching, okay? And my heels come out. And I sit between the heels, like so, okay? And then, how's your back? Are you swaying? Drop your sit bones down. Straighten your back. Interlink your fingers and go up. And lift and open the armpits. Shoulder blades down. Thumbs up, index fingers up. And then arms back down. You'll enjoy this. Heels together. And then sit outside your heels. Extra stretch on the ankles. And then again, lift your chest. Again, we'll interlink the fingers, but could you do it the other way? So the other fingers on top, palms out, go up, armpits up, shoulder blades spread, index fingers up, elbows grip in. See where they go behind your ears. And then release back down. Now, we're going to try Subdivirasana. So, in Subtavarasana, the feet are just wider than the hips, so you can sit down like that. And the calves can get in the way, so you come forward and you soften them. Soften them, a little calf massage, and then pull them back and out. Now that gives me more freedom. If you find at this point your knees are aching, your ankles are aching, your feet are aching, take a book or two and sit on. And that will take pressure out of all of the joints. It transfers the weight down into your sit bones rather than when you're like this. I feel the weight in my feet, in my shins as well. Okay. But if this is feeling comfortable, the next thing is you think, could I go back? And you don't go back with your back. You go back from your pelvis. So tuck your tailbone. Tuck your tailbone. And then maybe you go back onto your elbows. Okay. And then tuck your tailbone. And do you know what you do then? You tuck your tailbone a bit more. Okay? So once you get that tuck, it starts to flatten out your lower back. And then I draw my navel in to brace my lower back, my lumbar spine. And I walk my elbows toward my toes. And then lie down like this. Now if you feel a lot of ribs here sticking up, see can you bring them down. And then if that feels comfortable, Take your arms up over your head, forward your elbows, reach your elbows up. And as you reach your elbows up, keep your tailbone tucking down. Holding the pose. We're not going to do the full recommended 15 minutes. Just a few breaths. You will feel a lot of work in your thighs, perhaps a lot of stretch in your feet, your ankles. Fold your arms the other way. If you're feeling a lot of work in the lower back, a lot of stretch in the lower back, perhaps come up a little. Tuck your tailbone. If you can nearly get back, you could lie back over a couple of pillows or cushions. And then arms back down. Hold on to your feet, push in, and walk your elbows in, like so. And then pushing into your hands, come right up to sit. 
Your legs have been folded for a while. They're a little bit starved of blood. So can you take your hands forward and then walk your feet back? And then from there, stretch back into one leg and pump back into the heel. You'll feel the foot warming back up. You may even see it change color. Same with the other. Pump back into the heel. And then I'm going to ask you to lie onto your back. And if you're a yoga brick, super. If not, a couple of books. But that's about nine to eight inches thereabouts, okay? So I lie back, feet on the floor, and then pushing in. I'm going to lift up those hips and I'll take the brick. Do you see? It's under my sacrum. Oh, yes. That is lovely. If it's too far up, if it's an inch too far up, it digs in between the vertebrae. Very uncomfortable. If it's too far down, it just feels invasive, but also not supportive. So there's a sweet spot, and for me, that's it. My feet under the knees, heels under the knees. You can't see your own feet, but you'll have a general feel, and that will do fine. And then, can you interlink your fingers like this? Now, if you've got very wide books, that's a challenge, but perhaps you could hold the books. And then, do you see the way I'm getting onto my shoulders? Get up onto your shoulders, onto the tops of the arms. And then, keep your feet that far from your body, but walk them out wider, so they're out to the edges. You can feel the edges of your mat with your feet. And then let your knees fall in to give you some spread across the buttocks, the sacrum, the lower back. And ground into your little fingers and lift up your chest. And feel your, your midline between your shoulder blades, your middle and upper thoracic spine. Feel it lift up so that your chest opens. And to do that, feel how your shoulder blades have to move in and move in. And then bring your breath focus into the posture. With each inhale, breathe into the sternum. With each exhale, shoulder blades in. With each inhale, breathe into the sternum. With each exhale, shoulder blades in. So that you feel through in and out breath, your pose is growing. And then we're going to release the hands. We're going to let the elbows come out a little. And then lifting the hips, take that brick or stack of books out. And then ease your back right down. Tilt your tailbone down. Lengthen out your lower back. It's time for Shavasana. Take your hands a little away from your body. And if your back is feeling a bit surprised by the work you've done, keep your feet to the edges of your mouth, knees bent, and let your feet fall in. If your back is feeling fine, I hope it is, you stretch out the legs, have your feet a little apart, and then let them drop out to the sides. Palms face upward. Inner edges of feet face upward. Inner thighs open out. Upper arms roll out. Armpits have breathing space. Back of neck is long, front of throat is long. Head sinks back. Eyes close. Feel your eyes sinking back into your head. As your eyes sink back into your head, feel the whole of your face release. As your face releases, soften the nostrils, soften around the jaw, the lips, the mouth, the teeth. Quieten down into your throat. 
into your rib cage, into your abdomen. Feel your spine sinking down. Feel your hips ease down. Feel both the arms and the legs relax, relax into the floor. the whole body relaxes into the floor bring your focus into your abdomen just the abdomen and observe the flow of your breath there in your abdomen feel your abdomen rise and fall expand and contract You'd be tempted to, to follow your breath up into your lungs, into your throat. Keep it down in the abdomen. So our focus is and stays in the very center of the body, out of the head. And notice the rising and falling of inhale and exhale. And then finally, let go of your breath. Let go of your abdomen. Feel the whole of your body. Feel the floor under you and your body sinking down into the floor. No tension, all relaxed. Keep that softness in your body. Start to waken up your limbs. Fingers move, hands move. Toes move, feet move. Then bend your knees in, hug your knees in. Ease your back down into the floor. And then, can you roll to your right side? It needs to be your left side, it's okay. And roll up to sit. Can we cross our legs? However, it's comfortable. And we'll take our hands into prayer pose. We'll drop our heads. We'll pay our respects to the great tradition of yoga. And I bow my head to you. Thank you for coming to practice with me.